Hi guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Tom vs Dale. Now, I'm still actually working from home due to current government guidelines, so I'm not actually featured in this episode. But what you will see is what Tom and Chris from Swallows Racing have been doing to the car since we've been on lockdown. But before all that, we did actually go down and we painted the interior black, uh, gave it a moody look and tidied up the wires, just to give it a slicker, cleaner look. And we also started looking into corner weighting and what goes into that before the car goes out for race. So we're gonna shoot over back to Swallows with Tom and Chris, and they're gonna show you what's going on. So, now that Dale's in the car, what are we doing today, Tom? So we're gonna corner weight the car. Yes. So um, at the moment we're gonna do static corner weight. So um, we're gonna just check a couple of things around the car. So we're gonna check the tire pressures, um, make sure they're even all round. We've already disconnected the anti-roll bar so that doesn't affect any of our cornering loads on each corner. Um, we've got half a tank of fuel, all the fluid, so gearbox oil, engine oil, etc., and all the water. So that is as if the car is essentially race ready. So this um, is what you do with your race car? <clears throat> Yes, so there's a couple of stages to doing this. So at the moment we're going to do what they call uh, static corner weighting. So we would try to build a car around the scales, if that makes sense. So drive would be sat in, then we've got quite a few options to move weight. So yeah. we would move the battery to counteract that, fuel tank, fuel cell, fire extinguisher, those kind of things. Essentially to make the most balanced car. Yeah, so with a rear wheel drive car, the ultimate gain is to be 50-50 neutral and cross weighted as well. So that's sometimes impossible to achieve, but we can definitely achieve you see on here the cross weight so that is your left rear to right front so is what you're trying to achieve is 50% on as you can see we are we're really close already yeah. and then we will then adjust the dampers add in preload to add in weight to each corner if that makes sense gotcha. um, so we, we're trying to keep as, as equal weight distribution across those two so we have the same amount of weight over yeah. each contact patch of the tire yeah. um, so we've already done the alignment as well to, to help with that. Um, and then we're just gonna go through now and adjust with the coilovers around to, to get these in trim. I mean, we're pretty much there with one side. There's a little bit to dial out here and a little bit, a little bit there, so. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Dale! You can get out now. I don't want to. So you missed all the tech information about how to corner them. I heard it. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, good. So we're back. Welcome back to a new episode of Tom vs Dale. Today we're going to be fitting the newly supplied Tarox brakes all around, paired with the brand new Brembo calipers that we showed you in the last episode. We're then going to focus on some of the interior details such as the foot plates, steering wheel and battery tray. So enjoy, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. <laughs> steering wheel to Dale's s -type. So we've already fitted the steering boss to the steering column and now we're going to fit the actual quick release system to Dale's new steering wheel. By the power of the
now got the steering adapter fitted to the column. We've got the quick release system fitted to the adapter and also the quick release is now bolted to Dale steering. So we can actually physically fit and remove the steering wheel. Brilliant, so I can fit in there now. What? Come on in big boy. <laughs> A few moments later. So we're now going to fit the Tarox brakes to Dale's S-Type. So before we do that, we thought we'd give you a little bit of a technical background with some of the Tarox products we're going to be using. So we've decided to use the F2000 discs with the Strada pads. And I'll get Chris to give you a little bit of an overview on some of the technical um, specifications of the Tarox product. But that will give you a little bit of an overview of the disc itself. Um, looking at the pad itself, um, as you can see, there's not too many differences there compared to the OEM one but obviously the differences in the pad material itself so Chris will give you a bit of an overview on some of these products anyway. Yeah thanks Tom, so um, basically the, the main difference for all of the Tarox products here is that they are OEM fitment which is fantastic because it's bolt on, you do it yourself at home on your driveway if needed. Starting with the pads, the Strada range is the lowest uh, heat coefficient range so um, the Strada pad is fantastic for everyday driving, um, they are perfect from cold, uh, starting off with no noise. Um, you get amazing pedal feel and the pad compound means they are so much better from factory uh, than the, uh, the standard um, Jaguar type. Now the heat range of these is roughly 150 to 350 degrees optimum with a 600 degree um, higher realm level, which basically means any sort of performance driving, these will be more than capable of uh, being able to use for. The S2000 disc, uh, as Tom's shown you, there's obviously this um, lattice work uh, to the side here with uh, all the grooves. Now these grooves are amazing for cooling and, not, and durability uh, to the actual surface of the disc. Now these discs were uh, probably the most notorious uh, of all of the Tarox products, mainly because of their um, uh, touring car heritage uh, that they started with, um, and uh, we wanted to keep that race car feel to the vehicle um, yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean it is definitely the most iconic kind of Tarox look. Definitely, definitely. Um, but the, you know, there are four different um, products in the range there. Yeah. We've got the solid disc, we've got the G88, which is sort of the old school feel. And uh, we've also got the Sport Japan, which is more of a JDM yeah. look um, to the disc. So we felt that this one would be particularly great for, for this particular build. Right. So now we're going to pull the car apart and we're going to fit all of these products we've just described. So we've now removed the existing brakes from the vehicle, so we've taken away the old disc, pads, calipers, and we're back to the actual hub of the vehicle. Now, before we go fitting the new Tarox products, is what we need to do is to make sure the runout on the OEM hub is absolutely perfect. Now, the tolerances for standard vehicles is between 0.5 to 0.7 runout on these vehicles. So as you can see, we've got the DTI gauge set up on the strut, and we're actually going to just check the runout on the hub mating phase before we fit the new discs. Now it's very important to make sure that this surface is completely clean before we do this. You can do this just with emery or a bit of wire wool to make sure it's, it's clean. Now if any dirt or debris is behind here, well, firstly it will show obviously on the DTI gauge. Um, if you don't have a DTI gauge, it is recommended to at least make sure this face is absolutely perfectly clean. Any sort of debris behind there can cause vibrations which you obviously don't want under heavy braking. So, like I say, DTI gauge is on, and as you can see, we are well within the OEM tolerances that's required to fit the Tarox brakes. So we're now going to fit the pads to the Brembo calipers. Now, is what we need to do when we're fitting the pads is we use a high temperature copper slit. Now, the copper slit that we use is actually rated to about 1400 degrees. So with uh, race applications, um, this is obviously absolutely perfect. So we just need to put a little bit on each edge of the pad just to stop it from sticking in the actual caliper itself. And then we can fit these into the caliper. Perfect. 
Now the calipers are, uh, the pads are back on the calipers. It's what we need to do is we need to make sure that all of the pins and the sliders for the calipers are absolutely perfectly clean before we put these back into place. Now, Chris has just added a very tiny bit of brake paste on there just so that the pin on the top of the caliper can sit on that grease there just to avoid that actually sticking. And then we've cleaned the original pins back up and we can fit these into the pad there. So Tom's fitted all the brakes to the vehicle now and we've completely renewed all of the brake fluid with Tarox High Performance Brake Fluid. Next stage for us is to do all of the uh, bedding in procedure. So we'll take that out on the road. So typically speaking, we'll do 250 miles of light braking for any new brake pad combination, um, just to ensure that there's no warping effects. This is greatly reduced with any Tarox products, purely because of the bespoke nature of the brakes uh, and the fact that all discs are completely um, checked by Giovanni, the owner of uh, Tarox himself, um, out of the factory, and the tolerances are extremely small. you Dale in the studio. <laughs> Gee thanks guys. So thanks again for joining us for another episode of Tom vs Dale. Make sure you like, share and subscribe and tap that notification bell to be notified when the next Maguire's video is released and make sure you stay safe.